Yeah, I don't even think I've ever been in a Tesla, and the first one I get to drive is this one. <laughs> it's like throwing so many warnings now. Like everything just got disabled. Oh, oh my god. All right, so what do we got going on here? So we're trying to turn traction control off, and I think it uh, it's not working. So, um, yep, it keeps turning on because we got... Uh, we got a lot of little issues with the car. ABS oh, needs service. Maybe we'll pull yeah. into a Tesla service place <laughs> and bring, bring this thing into the dealership. Oh, I don't know. It's making a weird noise. It, was, it wasn't happening this morning, right? Getting a little, little bit of noise when I turn exactly. the wheel. So like, let me ask you this. Your first Tesla test drive, did you imagine it be this way? <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> we'll see if I'm sold on one of these bad boys. <laughs> Wait, what happened? Oh shit! <laughs> oh my god! I didn't even see him there! <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out how to use his phone. Siri? Teague is so proper, he puts his blinker on. <laughs> blinker on to come in. Oh, I couldn't see it because of my stupid wing. Did you, did you fill up on it? I did. Did you finish your, uh, your pepperoni and egg bake? Yeah, I did a whole thing on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm a big egg, <laughs> egg sandwich connoisseur and uh, I've never seen pepperoni on an egg sandwich before. Wait. You got breakfast? Yeah. So budget cuts, I didn't get any meal. I didn't, yeah, get, a you meal. didn't get a meal. These M boys out here. Teague with the crispy M5. So today we're gonna go down to San Diego to go visit the guys over at EV West. And squish everyone into the backseat of this and make this old man sit in my race buckets. They're kind of one of the first in the game that started doing the uh, electric swaps and the cars. You know what I love? Is the fact that they're offsetting all of our carbon footprints here. So the fact that they have an EV and that we're driving these two, we can rip the cats off these Bavarian cream puffs and bomb ass all the way to San Marcos. You got a 914, a Cherry 914, and you're excited about this. I get, this. I, I'm having information overload right now with all of this happening. So. God. <laughs> Yo, what's up, bud? What's up, man? What hey, is buddy. going on? <laughs> yeah, okay, so is this like, is this like a, a joke that you're an electric conversion shop and you have a DeLorean? The DeLorean was the only car put into production by DMC. Although the early vehicles had an impressive waiting list, the MSRP of $25,000, equivalent to approximately $72,896 in 2019 was cost prohibitive for the majority of the consumer market. Boasting a 0 to 60 miles per hour time of 10.5 seconds, the DeLorean fell short of the buyer's expectations. But what the vehicle lacked in power, it made up for in its sleek aesthetic. Being the only stainless steel chassis impervious to corrosion, the DeLorean was chosen as the basis of the time machine from the 1985 film Back to the Future, and has entered popular culture as the car that can defy time and space. With a large number of the originals still on the road after over 30 years, most estimates put it at 6,500 cars surviving out of just over 9,000 built, and new chassis being put into production. The ever-growing DeLorean community still stands the test of time. 
So this thing looks cherry, man. What is the like? What is the deal with this? Do you just steal wool this on the daily? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the only car we can detail with appliance clean. So, uh, look, the car came out of DeLorean Motors in Humboldt, Texas. They're rebuilding the cars. Uh, it's a great company. They picked up the assets and. Did uh, they get cocaine in the glove box when they got it? It's like a box of Cracker Jacks. Okay, yeah, yeah exactly. And with every it, purchase. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's never had an engine in it, um, so it's it's brand new. It's got, I think, four miles on the odometer. Uh, oh, so they, in it. well, wait, I have two yeah. questions now. Yeah. So one, they make these brand new still? Yeah, yes. so they're reassembling them down in Humboldt, Texas. You can go out and buy a brand new 1984 DeLorean. With so, and then my other question is, how does a car with no engine have four miles on it? Uh, is that like, is that like... All of our Hoonigan cars have a lot. Yeah, yeah. Insert Scotto's cars being pushed around the shop joke here. Nads, open this door real quick. I got my... I don't want to touch it. Go for it. I don't even really want to go near this thing. Look at... Oh, my goodness. Oh. This is like... Wow, this is so this. 80s. Oh, my God. So That's we've a, started work. We've already just assembled some interior parts and stuff. You can see, but... You were wrong. It's got 0.3 miles Oh, on does it really? It. Yeah, it's oh, got nothing wrong. on it, man. Uh, I was, trying to, I was trying to make you guys feel good for all the pushing you do around the shop. <laughs> all, and now this is all new old stock parts. That all they new use, old right? stock yeah. parts. Look at the yeah. wheels even. Like, yeah, yeah, wow. Well, this is sick, but I mean, we should really go check out some of the other, yeah, other so. things here. All right, so this thing is one of my favorite builds. You guys make me one promise. Yeah. One day. You gotta let me drive this at clockwise 13 of button low. Okay. Yeah, we could do a little, uh, just do a time attack challenge. Yeah. yeah. I wanna see if I could do like a, uh, I don't know, I wonder what this thing's capable of. The, the loser has to do a lap on the front of the Tesla Mino. <laughs> <laughs> Hi oh there shit! Yeah. Oh. Still, shake on it. So what else we got here? We got this beautiful looking early 911. Yeah, base early 67, this Ooh. has the Tesla swap. This is really like, our drop-in reversible kit. Wait, uh, you said right. drop-in? Drop-in, right. So, so the most important thing on our classic car is keeping the chassis uh, original, right? And so all of our work, we make wow, it so, so clean. it can be reversed. So this can come out. This is actually mounted in here through the factory mounting points for the gas tank. Wow. Right? Well, this thing's so, sweet. So this has a 100D yeah. and motor and transmission. Right, so it has a performance motor in it. Wow. And, uh... You What's know, wrong with you? How, how, <laughs> yeah. how this thing must weigh like 2,000 pounds. It is 2450 on the scales right now, and I think we are about uh, 42 front, 58 rear. As well. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And now, these, it, are the, these it, are the mounts here? Right, these are the mounts here. So this whole subframe is a one-piece subframe that incorporates wow. all the electronics like the battery monitoring system and contactors as well as safety switches, fuses, and the actual battery pack itself. So this is a, a complete kit in the tray. And so you, you pretty much just like, unplug a couple of wires right, and just drop it all in, down? Right, up a throttle pedal, some coolant lines, uh, and the axles bolt right in. I mean, this thing's gotta be a riot. It doesn't have very wide tires, so very I imagine this tires. thing... It's turned down to about 40%, and it's still probably the fastest SWB uh, I've ever been in, for yeah. sure. And I love the... You got some, you got a lathe, stuff, some old yeah. school, yeah. And then we kind of have bridge the port. bench over here. We do a lot of the, you know, we've hacked the Tesla chargers so we can use them outside of the Tesla. We have, uh, this is kind of like our little mini dyno bench here where we can come in, we can take the Tesla motor and flash some firmware on it to kind of get around their controls. And then after that, we want to go through and actually test the motors so we can use this bench here as a test bench and actually run up the motors. Oh here. shit. Test all the functionality. We can program the regen and the max current. And uh, we actually record all this stuff, take a video, write down the serial number, and then send this out as a complete package to the customer. So when they're bolting it in, it's kind of like getting, you know, imagine getting a video of your motor on a dyno before you actually install right. the car. Right. And then you see the numbers and the specs. I mean, so, so you could set the map depending on the, the... Depending on the car, but it's user adjustable through a touch screen. Oh, so, wow. you know, you, you kind of give them a little bit of guidance, but you know, we're all gearheads, we're going to do what we want. Yes. So. so what type of data are you looking at on this? So we, we pick up five different temperature points throughout the car and you'll see those mapped across there from anywhere from the stator temperature to the PCB temperature. Um, you know, you see all the 21, everything's pretty consistent yeah. across there. How do you turn cool. it to 11? So <laughs> you just hit it. I mean, this will go like 17,000 RPM. 17 
you know, 17.3 on this axle speed, you're at like 160 miles an hour. So wow. It was 160 <laughs> to zero. So. Wow. That's nuts. Yeah. Cool. And, and I think the most fascinating thing about this, I know it's a test bench, so there's a lot of crap on it, but this is the system, right? You get the throttle pedal, the brake switch, some contactors, there's a 400 volt battery, and here's your whole drive. So that's it. Ben, help me roll this out to your car. Yeah, let's start putting this in the M3 right, right this now. Is the whole entire drivetrain right there. I love it. It's awesome. And I love that this is so like hot rodder because like you wouldn't expect there to be like a lathe and like a bridge port and a shop where you're just building yeah, like ferro arm over there, you know. Yeah, where you're building like Teslas, you know. <laughs> right. Like I just feel like those two aren't generally that close. <laughs> so no, cool. yeah, a couple CNCs. You do a lot of like trim work, carbon work, and stuff like that. Um, you got a body on a rotisserie yeah, here. Yeah, one of our technicians working on our yeah, what's up, bud? Uh, classic. It's a classic Volkswagen Beetle. Again, another reversible wow. kind of kit. Um, single cab pickup. This is actually going to be another shop truck project. And that's a brand new Model 3 battery in the bed. So we're going to do one of our first Model 3 battery transplants. Oh, wow. On this project. Why? What's the difference with that? Uh, it's got higher energy density. And it's got better cooling. Nice. So okay. it should let us drive a little further, be a little bit lighter weight, and we can hoon on it a little bit harder because it uh, can wick out the temperature. Sweet. Settings. Love that. Nice 2002. Uh, E10 project. This one's getting the baby Tesla unit. And we have another E10 right now that's actually getting all the engineering done we're doing a um e12 rear subframe conversion mm. so this is getting the trailing arms and hubs discs everything out of an e12 wow yeah. nice um won't even won't even ask about that or that so <laughs> flying stuff yeah it seems super safe um kind of into the warehousey portion here this shop. is this is their employee bay which is really dope yeah, that a lot of receiving like this is a typical if you're going to do a porsche conversion this would be your uh, bell housing adapter so oh. everything up through the g50 all the way back to like the early early this will fit nice uh raw tesla pack a lot of people don't get it Wow, power. that's wild. And so that's a 90 kilowatt hour pack. Typically, we'll uh, dismantle that pack and build about three different EV projects. With the okay, engine. yeah, because that obviously that size doesn't work for anything. Right? Yeah, and it's, it doesn't do the car any favors. A lot of guys just instantly want as much range as they can get without really figuring what the weight will do to it. So right. it's definitely a balance between keeping the car fun to drive and lightweight, but having enough range that you can you know, still have a functional Yeah, car. what does that weigh? Uh, as it sits, it's about 1,200 pounds and wow. about uh, 200 of that structure. Wow. So, uh, and this is our uh, forklift. <laughs> <laughs> Sick. Yeah, well, man. Electric, of course, has to be. Now. And so, this is the parts and pieces. We got, you know, everything from axles, chargers, inverters, brake parts. Uh, we're trying to repurpose most of the systems, everything from the electronic e brake to you know, wow. the batteries and the drive systems. Yeah. You know, the whole industry, even though we've been doing this 10 years, the whole industry is really, really young and not a lot of people have experience playing with the Tesla stuff because that's really just happening in the last couple of years. So it's one of those situations where we just encourage everyone, you know, try, try and build something, try an idea, try something. You know. Hell yeah. This, this reminds me of when you say it's, it's such an early stage, this reminds me of the early stages of hot rodding. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's the roots of this. My dad grew up in West Hollywood and this is exactly what they did. I mean, this is the roots of hot rodding. Take a, you know, uh, it's easy to forget the Tesla is a 5,500 pound luxury sedan. You know, it's kind of like the fair lane back in the day, right? And you take the big walk out of the fair lane, put it in something small, AC Cobra or, you know, uh, E36. Yep. And, you know, the formula has already been written. I said it before, like you guys were kind of like some of the first doing that, or at least the guys who we saw with like big exposure. Like yeah, I think the E36. The first guys on the internet. Yeah, like the E36 like started making a lot of noise and stuff. And now we see I don't know more. If it made a lot of noise then. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, Pun killer. Yeah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> But no, like now, like lately, we've seen so yeah. many more like EV swaps coming out. And it's really cool to see like, you know, kids just thrashing on these things in their like parents' driveways, putting them together and then coming out and having fun with them. So, well, there's a reason for it. There's a reason you see S14s. There's a reason you see two JZs, stuff like that, because it works. And this formula works. You know, we tell customers, if you put one of these rear ends in anything that weighs less than like 26, 2700 pounds, you have a sub 10 second car in the quarter mile. And that's, you know, that's a pretty uh, uh, compelling argument for it, you know. Hmm. Yeah. Should we build something electric? I don't know. Maybe. Nads? <laughs> I'm sold. P100D, 
front wheel drive, yep. sport front wheel drive, EG Civic hatch. Yeah, all about it. So one of the reasons why we wanted to come down here is obviously this E36. And this is kind of the car I think that, would you say this like put you guys on the map? Yeah, this definitely started it for us. We were playing around uh, with electrics as a hobby. I was working on a 1965 912 project for myself. At the time we were endurance racing uh, an E30 that we had built and just had a lot of fun with it and uh, couldn't believe how well. Uh, the car handled and everything, and we just wanted to do something new and nice. exciting. Yeah, I remember seeing uh, Matt Farah do yeah. his like one take with yeah. this car way back when, and obviously it looked a whole lot different back then. Different drive line, it was more stock. Uh, we didn't have a wide body kit on it, and uh, it had a old, little bit older technology. It was a little bit heavier. Back then it was weighing in at 3,800 pounds. We've now got it down to 2,750 pounds. And you took 1,000 yeah. pounds out of it? Yeah. It How do you take 1,000 pounds out of a car? So, mo yeah, mostly in the motors. The old motors uh, were pretty heavy. They were about 250 pounds each, and we had two of them. Uh, the new Tesla motor with the differ uh, differential, the reduction gear, and the inverter is only about 300 pounds. So. What? Is that under here? Or is it in the back? Well, so that's in the back. It's now a rear wheel drive car. Uh, rear, 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 rear engine, engine rear, rear wheel drive. drive. Yeah. Now, can we also just talk about the time that you ran? You ran sub 12 in this, yeah, right? Yeah, ran sub 12. On, on the older, longer course before. Uh, it yes, too. A little safer. Also right. want to point out, like, not a lot of error. Doing a sub 12. No, yeah, not a big wing, not, not, not a, a big splitter. Error. For sub 12, it pikes and with that, you know, I mean, that's moving. And you know, uh, we had Boris said the NASCAR yep, driver. I know up. Boris. He was, yep. So he was our driver. Uh, you know, they call him the road course ringer. Yep. <laughs> and uh, in 2012, they had a pretty big forest fire in Colorado, and they were forced to change the date three weeks back. That was the same weekend as Watkins Glen. So we looked around. We talked to uh, one of the unsers. We talked to a couple of guys, but ultimately made the decision. Uh, uh, I jumped in the car. I'm just an amateur road course guy. And we wanted to be real conservative and we just wanted to make it to the top. The year that we ran was the year that Jeremy did like 18 yep. rolls yep. in the Evo yep. and all oh, that. Man. Oh, that's way worse than last year. And before I even took my run, I think Life Flight had already been off the mountain like four times. Uh, so I was nervous, you know, and we just, we decided as a team, let's uh, do a really, really conservative run. And we ended up sub 12. We beat the entire vintage car class. So my first time up the hill, every Mustang, Cobra Cuda, 911, all the vintage guys. So, nice. and, 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 and it was, it was literally an epiphany. It was a moment where I realized the electrification somewhat leveled the playing field for us. We beat Munster Tajima that year in the GoPro team. I mean, they had, you know, 40 technicians on their car. We beat Yokohama and Blue Dream. We, and so all of a sudden, this little three-man team out of tiny little San Marcos was competing with, you know, international uh, factory-supported teams. This car, when you did that, that had the old motor setup, but right. that was with the Power Glide, two-speed yeah, glide? Yeah, two-speed Power Glide. We actually engineered our own uh, power glide without a torque converter. So oh, wow. I think we built the only uh, female input shaft power glide okay. out there. So uh, we built it that way so our motor would actually- Why no torque converter? Uh, because um, we don't need slip. We can stop our motor because our motor doesn't stall. And most of our torque is developed down low. Oh, yeah, <laughs> got it. Uh, so when we did when we did a dyno test on this, we put it on a Mustang dyno. We hit over 850 foot pounds of torque at 60 RPM, six zero. So that's where most of your torques developed, and uh, and that system was a low. It was a low RPM system. Our rev limiter kicked in at 4,000 RPM. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can we pop the hood on this thing? And I don't what's I don't know what's I, I under don't here. Know. That's why I want to see. Is there nothing? What is this? Is that something? Okay. Balance. So like, is it a ballast? It's batteries. Yeah, this is a obviously, 32 right? kilowatt hour of LG Kim uh, battery. It's arranged uh, 2P96S. The power output of the pack is 600 kilowatt. 
um, but that's going to be limited by our inverter. Is it kilowatt like a 1.3 horsepower or right, something like yeah, that? Right, so, okay. 746 watts yep, per. Yep. So what about like normal car stuff, you know, like that looks like it has a power assist on the rack. That's not, definitely not from an E36. Right, that's actually so. from a GM. It's the Japanese made, uh, GM makes a great uh, electric steering assist and so we why? Like oh, because you don't have a power steering pump now, so no instead of running manual steering, yeah. Yeah. okay, makes and, sense. And even if we did, uh, see, I figured that one out as I said. From <laughs> what I'm learning, okay. This is you got like all the switches inside. Yeah. Like, dude, is this more complicated than a normal? Like, no, uh, the car is street legal. So if you notice, the, yeah, street legal. It's insured, license and registration. Um, and you know, most of the switches are actually street legal. Drivers. Oh, okay. So it's Turn just like signals and stuff like that. Cool. So. What size wheel and tire are you running? These are some meats, man. Yeah. 295 40. 295 40. We've been playing around with different sizes. We kind of like, I think 335 is a nice size for us. Um, yeah, we still got room outward yeah. to fit. Our problem is, is we keep just shredding tires. We need a tire sponsor if anyone's listening. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was a lead. You can't even call that a shameless yeah, plug. Yeah, yeah. Can't even Holler at this guy. Plug. But um, the problem is, is you have a uh, 2,700 pound car with reduction at the rear axle, you got almost 5,000 foot pounds of torque. What? Yeah, so you're, you're gonna- What was that number? Yeah. 5,000 foot pounds. Almost 5,000, yeah. And it's instantaneous, yeah. essentially. The motor does, I think, 440 or something like that, and it's in roughly a 10 to one reduction. Yeah. So, it's, so it's fixed gear, so it's not a CVT. Right. And it's fixed, not, fixed it's production. just one speed motor yeah. is spinning that fast. Yeah. That's how fast the driveline sprints. Yeah. Open that trunk, open the trunk. The actual reduction gear. One of them. They do two of these, but that's. Uh, oh, we're gonna learn science now. Yeah, that's a Tesla reduction gear. Wow. I don't know what and I'm they, looking at. They run. So is it one comes out of the engine, one uh -huh. comes out of the. This is like a ring and pinion. And this well, is like it's output. a helical gear, and you know, a ring and pinion's a little efficient because you're right. changing the direction of the torque, right? Right. So, uh, the nice thing about the motor is it's transverse mounted. So everything stays transverse coming out the axle. Right. So it's a little bit more efficient transfer power. Okay. So, so this on the right here is actually inverter controller over here, inverts the DC power. And then there's three phase leads crossing over this gap underneath there uh, to the motor. So this is the motor on this side. This isn't a twin motor, it's a single motor. We have uh, a 973 reduction in here. So it's 25, 78, I think twice. Is that uh, so stock out of something? That's or? Uh, it's uh, Tesla. That's it's just the model what? Uh, model S, Model okay. X, yeah. Cool. And <clears throat> then up front there is an open differential. And we have LSD options for them. We, you really don't need it. You pretty much uh, light them both up every time, so. Okay, we're kind of, we're idiots here. I want to, yeah. can you show us what an EV motor looks like and how it, how it works in it? Do you guys have something set up? Sure, absolutely, let's go take a look. switched it to air shocks so that we could lift it. And this is, <laughs> this is our air shock system. Wait, Brad! Brad works here? Oh Jesus, that came on that, that was loose. <laughs> Oh my lord. So let's just take a look at the, like what the hell did you do here? What is this thing? Well it's uh, a pickup truck. Did you roll it? Like, why? What's the deal? It was, believe it or not, a perfectly good Tesla. We uh, we sourced Teslas for the parts for our builds, like the Pikes Peak M3 and stuff like that. And uh, we want to get cars in a fairly okay condition, so the battery pack's intact, the motor, and all that. And uh, like any good car shop, we just want to have some fun. So you cut the roof off of a perfectly good Tesla. <laughs> and it's uh, my buddy and I use it to go to the desert and ride dirt bikes. And uh, like it's- Wait, you actually load dirt bikes in this we thing? We actually load dirt bikes in it. We try not to take things too serious and we just wanted to have a fun project. We could ride dirt bikes. Dude, this is awesome. I love that yeah. you use this as a pickup. Yeah, I mean, this is probably the richest El Camino ever. <laughs> Does this gate like fall down? It's a quick release. <laughs> it's a quick release, quick release right there. Release. Oh, no. no, no, no. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know this was a build biology. <laughs> <laughs> How come their, their spares cars look so much better than our spares cars? 
I mean, arguable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is, I, I think they have nicer stuff inside, but I don't know if you'd say this is their nicer build. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you did put weather stripping uh, on, yeah, right? custom. <laughs> gaffer's tape, so. Gaffer's tape is strong, that's I a know, professional it's like, stuff. It's not duct tape, it's gaffer's Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, so never really been in a Model S before, never really been, haven't been in an El Camino in a hundred years, so now I'm going Tesla Mino. Okay. Seatbelt time. Seatbelt time. <laughs> so sketch. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> Scando. I don't know. Drifting what? <laughs> That's a proper drift. <laughs> I don't know. Where's the park thing? There's no park thing. You just, just get out. How do I get out? Just get out. Pull that. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Everything's so hidden. Uh, well, that's it. Hot rodding from the future. Electric coonage, driving stupid, cut up, expensive cars and dirt bikes in the back. That's it. We're out of here. Gonna go sit in traffic. 17 hours to LA. Nad, you got anything to say? Yeah, they're just as shitty as we are, but way smarter. <laughs> That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Silent. This is the EV wrap. Yeah. This is the EV West wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> you can hear the cicadas. cicadas. Yeah. You can hear the, you can hear the cicadas. Dude, 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 Wow, that thing obliterates tires with no noise. <laughs> it just disappeared. <laughs> it's literally gone. We just filmed the Back to the Future sequel right here.